Our final inductee to Witty's 2011 Hall of Fame is Ms. Evelyn Berezin. Evelyn Berezin invented what we know as the first office computer in 1953 while working for the Underwood Company. Underwood was sold subsequently to Olivetti, who never marketed Evelyn's invention. Evelyn then went on to work for Teleregister, where she developed several online real-time systems, including the first online reservation system in the world for United Airlines. In 1968, Evelyn arrived at the idea of developing a word processor that would enable secretaries to store and edit texts in, le in less tedious ways than could be accomplished with typewriters. In 1969, she founded the first word processor company, Redactron Corporation, using market available microprocessing chips to bring her idea for word processors to fruition. Ms. Berezin is a recipient of the Long Island Distinguished Leadership Award and the NYU Alumni Association's Meritorious Service Award. She has been featured in Business Week's list of top 100 businesswomen in the United States. Currently, Ms. Berezin works as a management consultant for Brookhaven Science Associates, which manages and operates the Brookhaven National Laboratory. Ms. Berezin had hoped to join us in person tonight, but unhappily, at 86 years of age, being sidelined with a knee injury does not make for easy cross-country travel. Yeah. Her colleagues at Stony Brook University, however, knowing of Ms. Berezin's disappointment at not being able to accept her award in person, have lovingly and masterfully crafted a video that paints a powerful scene of her accomplishments. I'm Evelyn Berezin, and when I was a small child, I was very interested in physics. The reason for that was that my brother had these great magazines called Astounding Science Fiction, which I read as a young girl, and I just fell in love with it. And that's what started it. But this was the Depression, and I had very little reason to believe that it was possible to get anywhere in physics. Certainly, as a woman, it was hard to get a job at all, hard for a man to get a job in the Depression. And so, uh, as I went to school, I really had given that up. But then, the Second World War happened. That war was a blessing for many people and a horror for most. But for women, it was really a great opportunity. And it, it permitted me to, to go to college and to change my degree and to get degrees in physics and later graduate degrees in physics. However, I never really used it because one day I found myself in a computer company in October of 1951, designing computers when I not only had I never done that before, but most of the people in the world didn't even know they existed. The first computer had been delivered in 1949, and this was just two years after that. And so we taught ourselves how to build computers, and I was hired as the head of the logic design department, which was the, really the group that designed the computers, whereas all the engineers built them. I did that for quite a few years and found that I, I had started as head of that de department and uh, I went to a number of different companies but uh, always in that same job and I realized that there were no other jobs that I could get and that reaching to a, let's say a vice president's role in, a, in the small companies in which I worked uh, was just simply not at the cards for me. And I started the company in the late 60s the field that we chose after a lot of work and investigations uh, was word processing. Uh, you may not know that when I started the company in the late 60s, uh, word processing really didn't exist in the United States. There were 6% of the populations were secretaries and typists, and, and that's what they did. They typed and retyped. And so it seemed that a machine, which was just beginning to be possible to build, uh, to do automatic word processing would be a useful device. I had no experience in business. Nobody in my family had any experience in business. And I had not a clue as to what I was getting into. We actually went public a couple of years after we started the company and developed a manufacturing capability for these word processes that we sold in competition with IBM, I may say, and ended up um, with about 500 people in that company. The company was sold in 1974, 
five, and we sold it to Burroughs, which was a, a very big computer company based in Detroit. I uh, worked for them for a while, and, and then got involved in venture capital, and there I have to stop and say, that's sort of the second big technical revolution because that was just the beginning at that point. In biology, DNA had been determined some time before and there was a, a, a vast change in the way biological research was done and in what could be accomplished. And I was part of a little venture capital fund and also some other people who uh, tried to help these companies. Uh, I was on the board of a number of them over the many years. I think I've been on about 30 small, all technology-based, early phase companies. The third revolution, which was the, the, women's, the women's revolution. And I was already uh, grown up when that happened. And I found, as I talked to women who were in it, uh, how, how difficult it was to get work at all, even though they were educated and had done a lot of interesting stuff and so on. At, at that point, somebody came to me, a woman named B. Fitzpatrick, who was, had really had the idea of trying to help women to start their own companies. Uh, that, I thought, was a, a great idea because it answered a lot of the problems that women were having. We ended up getting money together and at first training women who had a lot of experience and, and uh, education and so on, but more and more te uh, teaching women who were uh, poor and had very little education and many of them on welfare. And we taught them to start, how to price and how to, uh, how to cost and how to do all the things that were necessary to, to get their own company going. We trained thousands of women, and our success ratio was, I, I, if I remember correctly, about 60%, which was really quite remarkable. And so uh, the company with that group was called the American Women's Economic Development Corporation. We, it was run, I, and I was on the board of it for about 25 years, after, at the end of which, uh, which was only some years ago, we decided that we had really won the game and it wasn't really needed anymore because there were more women starting companies in the United States than men. The, the most astonishing thing about uh, this whole story is that, is that I grew up in a Bronx tenement where nobody had any money at all. I mean, absolutely none. And that it was possible and really because the whole country was changing uh, with the beginning of the war and through the periods beyond it to where opportunity was opening up all over the place. And I'm astonished that at that point I got to starting my own company, to um, getting on boards of big companies, to work with all kinds of technical companies that all started, all, all in new technologies. I mean, it was a most fascinating time. And, and if, when I grew up, none of this was, would have been thought possible. And it was certainly not possible for a woman. I must say that running a company is about the most fascinating thing I have ever done. And teaching other people about it sort of helped to keep that idea going. And accepting the, the award for, Ever, for Evelyn Berezin is witty founder and chairwoman, Carolyn Layton. I almost tripped. <laughs> First time this conference, usually I trip regularly, but. <laughs> it is so inspiring to most of us here. Hello, friend. <laughs> to hear the stories of the accomplishments of the women, not just tonight, but the years of the Hall of Fame Awards, because so many of these women are really and were anonymous outside of their immediate organizations. And one of Witty's goals has been to capture your legacies, those of you who are winners, because 100 years from now, we want everyone to remember what you've done, how you've contributed, and most of all, to inspire all those young girls who are future Hall of Fame winners. So it is really a pleasure to watch 
this video of Evelyn, who was one of the early pioneers, and to be able to accept the award on her behalf. And I wish she were here with us tonight, but she is here in spirit. So thank you very much. And I would love to have our inductees make their way to the stage because I'm sure we're not the only ones who want some photo opportunities with them. But ladies and gentlemen, though, besides that, this concludes our program for the evening. It really has been an extraordinary night, hasn't it? I think so. <laughs> and of course, we do hope to see all of you back here again next year for the 17th annual Hall of Fame Awards here at this very same Double Tree Hotel in San Jose, and that will be September 30th through October 2nd of 2012. And as we continue to make history, ladies and you know, gentlemen, thank you for joining us as well, and have a good night. <laughs>